name amen what a joy what a joy what a joy what a blessing we are family amen and so as family we celebrate good days together hallelujah so we are just going to get into the word but allow me to first switch off this phone because it is not fun anymore <laughs> Hallelujah. Fruitfulness is our new series. Amen. We are in a new month and we are starting the series of fruitfulness. This is your year of fruitfulness and we have just received a testimony from our dear sister. That one you can leave it on, I think. Unless you're feeling cold. Ah, okay. Unless, um, what am I saying? You distracted me. <laughs> fruitfulness. We received a testimony from our dear shepherd Jenina who said that uh, the year dawned upon her with a new job and that yeah every testimony is a prophecy for you I'm telling you when people are testifying you be doing the receiving amen you receive it you receive you say this year it dawns on me with a testimony amen so that's why we are now in the series called fruitfulness in this February Amen. What was the series for January? Yeah, that was just to greet us, isn't it? Now we are getting into the real stuff. Fruitfulness. Happy New Year was to get us to understand who we are in Christ. Because with, without knowing who you are in Christ, you cannot experience fruitfulness. But fruitfulness is the real deal. Amen. So tell your neighbor, fruitfulness is my portion this year and we are going to get into the script which is Mark chapter 4 from verse 3 to verse 20 Mark 4 3 to 20 or you can also say 20 depending on which country you were born in Mark 4 3 to 20 And we're going to read from verse 3. Let's read together. Together, go. Listen. Behold, a sower went out to sow. And it happened as he sowed that some seed fell by the wayside. And the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth verse 6 but when the sun was up it was scorched and because it had no root it withered away and some seed fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it and it yielded no crop but other seed fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprang up, increased, and produced some thirtyfold, some sixtyfold, and some a hundred. Verse 9. And he said to them, He who hears, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. But when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parable and he said to them to you it has been to you it has been given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God but to those who are outside all things come in parables so that seeing they may see and not perceive and hearing they may hear and not understand lest they should turn and their sins be forgiven them verse 13 and he said to them do you not understand this parable how then will you understand all parables the sower sows the word and these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown when they hear Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts these likewise 
are the ones sown on stony ground who when they hear the word immediately receive it with gladness they even lift up chairs and they have no root in themselves and so endure only for a time afterward when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake immediately they stumble now these are the ones sown among thorns they are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world and deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things they entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful but these are the ones sown on good ground those who hear the word accept it and bear fruit psalm 30 fold psalm 60 and psalm 100 thanks be to god amen let us pray father we thank you for your word indeed the entrance of your word brings light and gives understanding to the simple we come to you lord believing that we are going to receive understanding none of us shall remain the same but all of us shall be blessed because we came in Jesus name we pray amen verse 3 to verse 8 is talking about how the sower sows and in verse 3 says that listen behold a sower went out and it happened as he sowed that some fell on the wayside okay and the birds of the air came and devoured it and some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth and immediately it sprang up because it had no depth of earth okay just pay attention to the different characteristics of the of the different grounds okay remember the seed is the same the seed is the same but the grounds are different the grounds are different are we together so for you to understand jesus is saying that this parable is the anchor for all parables all parables if you don't understand seed time and harvest you cannot understand anything else in the kingdom of god because he's saying that and he said to to, to them he who hears he who has ears to hear let him hear Okay this parable here when you understand it then you'll be able to understand all other parables In fact there's a scripture that I was looking for it's in uh, I believe it's in Genesis uh yes Genesis 8:22 media team you can put up that scripture for us Genesis 8:22 What does it say together while the earth remains seed time and harvest cold and heat winter and summer and day and night shall not cease it shall not cease for as long as this earth endures those seasons are not going to stop seed time and harvest they are not going to stop god created the universe the earth, the heavens and the earth by using words Amen. In the beginning Genesis 1:1, in the beginning God created both the heavens and the earth. Amen. He created everything uh from nothing just by using words. He said let there be and there was. Amen. And therefore there is a lot of importance that should be put upon the word. Amen. The word of God is the most important thing in your life. Even your words are the most important thing about your life. Someone said that a a man is only as good as his word, a woman also. Amen. Your word signifies who you really are. The word of you is you. That's why Jesus is referred to as the word of God because he is God himself. John 1:1 In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Amen. 
That's why you should not play around with your words. Your words are very, very powerful, very important. Without your words, you are not different from a cow. Everything that you have, a cow has. The only difference, apart from you not having horns, the only difference is that you can speak and a cow cannot speak. Animals, the thing they don't have that we have is speech. The Bible says that he created man from the dust, okay? And the man was complete and perfect. But when he breathed his spirit into the man, the man became a living soul or a speaking soul. Amen. Some translations call it living soul. Others call it a speaking soul. That is what differentiated the man from the other animals that had been created before him. Are we together? I'm trying to lay the foundation of the emphasis of the importance of words. Amen. The Bible says that God has placed his word above himself. Have you ever read that scripture? It's in the book of Psalms somewhere. Some people have read it. If the media team finds it, they will put it up. He said that I have placed my word above myself. Amen. That is how much God is laying emphasis on words, words, words. There is no one above God apart from his own word. He says concerning my word, I will never go beyond my word. Once I have spoken it, that's it. I submit myself under what I have spoken. But today people do not pay um, uh, attention or respect to their own words. Yeah, there are countries whereby some, if somebody says something, you don't even need to sign. Okay, some <laughs> historical time errors where that was true. Today it's not very common. Today you have to sign, even if you're getting married. Ah, first sign. Yes, we know. You have spoken, you have sworn, you mean it in your heart, but also add a signature here. Because we cannot trust people's words that much. <laughs> so that in case a few months, years down the road, you feel like changing your mind, we can remind you. Brother, sister, you signed here. There was a witness. Are we together? But in the era whereby words are respected, people do not need to sign anywhere. Why? Because there is so much importance placed on words. God did not need to sign, but for our sakes, he came and signed the dotted line. That was the covenant he had with Abraham. He said that, Abraham, I'm making this covenant so that you may know that I will never change myself. Why? Because he knew he was dealing with human beings. Otherwise, for himself, he just spoke. And there was. Words are very, very important. Amen. And so Jesus is saying that if we don't understand the parable of the sower, in verse 14 he said that the sower sows the word. That is it. That's the foundation. That is the, the fulcrum, the pivot of the whole parable. It's about the word. The sower sows the word. Have we understood that one? Hallelujah. And so... Let us see what now the, 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 the meat of the parable is. We go in the details. And that one we are going to go to verse 15. So we are seeing the different types of soils. Okay? The different, from, from, verse, from verse 3 he's talking about the different types of soils or ground. And then in verse 15 is when he begins to explain them. But maybe let's go a little bit back and, I, and we just talk about the different, we just see the different types of grounds. How many were they? In verse 4 he says, And it happened as he saw that some fell by the wayside. That's the first type of soil. The wayside. The wayside. What are the characteristics of the wayside? It's hard ground correct. Why is it hard? It has been compacted. Why has it been compacted? By who? By people passing or walking on that wayside. It's a road. Every large piece of garden has roads in them. And so in those roads, a good farmer will create definite roads, not so that you don't just walk anyhow anywhere. There are definite roads in a large piece of farm 
ground. Am I speaking the truth? Yeah. So because so because those roads are used for walking, people walk on them. Sometimes even they can become even semi-public roads. People going to the well to fetch water, they pass in the middle of your garden. <laughs> because there is a road there <laughs> that leads to the well, isn't it? Yeah. So that it be, it becomes hard ground because everyone is is working on it on a daily basis. So they fell on the wayside. One, it is hard. Number two, it is open. If there are plants on the other, in the other parts of the garden, on the wayside, there are no plants there. It is open ground. So the seeds that fall on the, on the wayside are visible to the birds of the air. Are we together? And we are going to get to the significance of that. The second type of ground uh-huh, is in verse 5. Some fell on stony ground where it did not have much earth. Stony ground, stony ground. It didn't have much ground. So the characteristic here is that the ground is there. Yes, it is fertile, but it does not have enough depth of the earth, of the ground. The soil is good, but it does not have much depth. Why? Because there are stones a few inches below the surface. There are stones everywhere. And so we are going to also see the significance of that type of soil. Verse 6, but when, no, verse 7, and some seed fell among thorns. And the Bible says, and the thorns grew up. So this, this type of ground is also good ground, by the way, but it has other things also in there. And those things are called thorns. The Bible says, and the thorns grew up. And we're going to look at the significance of that statement also. So those are the three types of ground. So the disciples, together with the 12 apostles, they come to Jesus and they ask him, Master, what is the meaning of that parable? And so he begins to explain to them. He told them, guys, if you don't understand this parable, I don't know how you're going to understand everything else I've been telling you or that I will tell you after here. Because this one is the, the pivot of how the kingdom of God works. And so he begins to explain in verse 15. He says, put there verse 15, says that, and these are the ones by the wayside. He's now beginning to explain. Okay? These are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. Immediately they hear. Okay? They hear. The word is sown. Verse 14, what does it say? The sower sows the word. Who is the sower? The sower can be God. Sowing what? The word. To where? To you. Where? In your heart. The sower can also be the pastor, the preacher, whoever is teaching you or preaching to you the word. Okay? The sower can also be the Bible. When you open it and you read it, it is speaking to you. Amen. So, the sower, all those are different types of sowers, but the consistent part is that it is the word. The sower sows the word. And he sows the word in your heart. Your heart is the ground. Your heart is the soil that receives, or is supposed to receive, the word. Amen. Amen. So he says that these ones, once they receive the word, immediately Satan comes and steals the word. Why? Because it's in the open. It's just right there. It's not, it's not guarded. It's not hidden. The Bible says that your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. Psalm 119. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. You have to hide that word in your heart. It's supposed to be hidden. Amen. Because when you don't hide the word and you leave it open, the enemy can see it from wherever he is. He can easily come and steal it from you. So how do we leave the word open? When we, one, do not understand it. When you don't understand the word, it remains open and visible to the enemy. That's why Apostle Moses, in his wisdom and his being a father, he said, no, let us introduce Luganda services. Let everyone hear the word in the best way that they can hear the word. Let everyone hear the word in the best way that they can understand. We're not going to subject everyone to come and attend English services when some of them cannot even 
speak English, they don't know. So we introduced the local language services. Here in Kampala, it's Luganda. Up north, it's, uh, it's uh, Acholi. Wherever, yeah? In, in the eastern, it is Lusoga. People are receiving the word in their local languages. That's wisdom, because people need to understand the word. Yeah, you might be a very anointed preacher, but if people do not understand what you're saying, they will not receive your word. Amen. In fact, stories are spoken of missionaries who have gone on the mission field and they have gone by faith upon an instruction from God that go to China. Somebody who has never spoken Chinese. They reach there, they begin to pray in tongues, speak in tongues, and then fluent Chinese come out and they preach a whole sermon in Chinese and people get saved when they themselves did not know what they were talking about. But the people who were <laughs> receiving the word, they had fluent Chinese, fluent Japanese, and they get saved. That God does those miracles because of this principle. The people need to understand the word. So if God needs to make a miracle, he will make it for you to understand the word. But you must of all first, you must first of all understand the word first. Amen. Because if you don't understand the word, it can easily be stolen. That's why in, in worship harvest, God has blessed us with a good father. Apostle Mose, he preaches so simply, everyone understands. And it's very practical. The preaching is simple and practical. Same with all the pastors, really. Including yours truly. <laughs> yeah, so simple, you have to understand. You have to have someone to help you to misunderstand. Amen. That is because of this principle. So, the ones by the wayside where the word is sown, when they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown. Let us look at some of the, the... So, one of the ways that the enemy steals the word is by you forgetting it. If you didn't understand it, it will be easy to forget. They'll, they can ask you, how was uh, service today? How was church? It was very powerful. Oh, it was powerful. So, what did the preacher preach about? Uh, all I remember is that it was powerful. If, even if you were there, you would, you would also testify it was powerful. But you don't remember what the preacher talked about. What did the pastor preach about? Tell me one point he said. Nothing. But it was what? Powerful. We lifted chairs. <laughs> yeah, because it's one thing to, to tickle the emotion. It's another thing to make people understand. Are we together? You must of all, first of all, understand. Then another way that the enemy steals the word is through distractions. Distractions. As the message is going on, as the message is being preached, you are being distracted. You are on the phone, you are texting, you are calling, receiving calls, receiving texts, giving and receiving texts in the middle of the sermon. That's a distraction. Jesus told the disciples, couldn't you wait for me for at least one hour? Couldn't you pray with me at least? Couldn't you keep your phone off at least one hour? Tell your neighbor he's not talking about you. <laughs> he has not even seen you. Yeah, he's just looking in his Bible. Phone destruction can be one of the ways that the enemy steals the word. Because for you, you will be deceived that yes, I'm hearing. I can multitask. And yes, you'll be hearing. But after the sermon, when somebody asks you what was the sermon about, you will not be able to relay what the sermon was about. Amen. And other distractions during the message. Amen. Yeah. What are some of the distractions? Maybe we can interact. Today, I'm, I'm, I'll, I think I'll do more teaching than preaching. We can interact. What are some of the distractions in church? Yes, please. Sometimes we come with baggage and we don't let it go. Yeah, you allow the baggage to, to distract your hearing of the word. You are in church, but you are still in that meeting. You are still in that. How could she say that to me? Even me, I applied. <laughs> Even me, I was given an appointment later. How could she say that to me? <laughs> All of us are here to try to earn some kamani. How could she say that to me? 
you sit in the meeting leave the meeting alone it happened on friday saturday past today is sunday for god's sake be in the class i mean mukanisa be in the what <laughs> be in the church yeah so baggage yes uh, other ways how we are distracted in church what are some of the, uh, of the ways yes please absent mindedness yeah when you are minded but absently <laughs> in other way <laughs> yes clothing clothing the one that you're putting on or the one that your neighbor is putting on the preacher Aish! <laughs> <laughs> Very good. You're right. The preacher can put on something that can make you not receive the word. You're just mesmerized at how smart the man is. <laughs> yes. Cry babies. I was waiting for that one because I didn't want to be the one to say it. Because they would say oh, no. <laughs> We can now go to the next point because that is what I... <laughs> You know someone said that a crying baby is like a good business idea it must be carried out immediately <laughs> yeah those are distractions amen so when you you safeguard yourself against those then the word will not be stolen from you i have some mention here in my notes feeling uh, offense when something is being taught yeah the preacher is preaching but you are offended if you are offended you cannot receive the people who were offended at Jesus could not receive from him especially the religious leaders who thought they knew the word of god they were saying ah we know this boy he is a carpenter we know his brothers we know his sisters his father they were offended so offense make sure when someone gets up to preach you just wash yourself of all offense even if she's a lady she's shorter than you and she has less hair than you just yeah position your heart to receive from her so that the word is not stolen from you then the third one is uh, judging the teacher's accent clothes gender someone mentioned that yeah don't don't judge the the preach except you know we also receive training as preachers of the word there is a certain acceptable way to dress there is a certain unacceptable way to dress it can also you know choke the word so you just yeah put yourself in a position whereby you don't judge just say ah me i'm going to receive the word amen then the other one is uh, not understanding it i've mentioned that one sleep or drowsiness during the message that one also i wish somebody had mentioned it because i didn't want to be the one to mention it yeah sleepiness drowsiness i'm told of a story whereby a certain girl was uh, a devil's agent and so she went to church whether she was truly looking for deliverance or she was there on mission i don't know but she was in church and then church was very uncomfortable because eh, the presence of god was there this people the way they were praising the way they were praying she felt uncomfortable and then she said this was her testimony not not mine she said <laughs> in the spirit because this is a spiritual thing in the spirit she opened her mouth and and blew a net and cast a net over that con- congregation and so the presence of god was kind of shielded from the congregation and people just began yawning and dozing and yawning <laughs> what a shock there shall be no spiritual such things here in the name of jesus amen amen For us we are under open heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, so we cast out all drowsiness and sleepiness. So that's how we the enemy steals the word. The enemy steals the word. Then soil number 2 Soil number 2 is in verse 16. Verse 16, what does it say? These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground who when they hear the word immediately receive it with gladness. What did soil number 2 have? Stones. It had stones. The first ground first soil was hard. This one was soft but very shallow. It had stones. So 
They receive it with gladness. A scientist made an experiment and put in a bottle two, two bottles he put their soil. In the first bottle he put a thin layer of soil. In the other bottle he put a, 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 a thick layer of soil. Okay? And he planted beans in both in both jars, both bottles. And obviously the bean that was in the shallow soil sprouted first because there was nowhere to go down the only way was to go up isn't it so they spring they spring up fast faster than the others it came out quickly but because there was no where for the roots to go as quickly as it sprang up it also died it died as quickly as it sprang up yes this other bean took time to come out. Why? Because it was first pushing its radical down in the soil. So by the time the plumule came out, the <laughs> by, the time the <laughs> by the time the plumule came out, the pastor knew some science. <laughs> so that is the same principle that don't worry. In fact, people who uh, in ministry and they get discouraged that hey, I'm not receiving the recognition don't worry, keep doing what you're doing, you're pushing roots down, you're pushing roots, don't fight for recognition, yeah, there are some preachers whom we used to call in those years rocket preachers they come up from nowhere very fast and then as fast as they came up, they disappear like a rocket, don't see them again, don't hear from them again they disappear don't be a rocket preacher. Be a grounded preacher. Amen. God is working with you. Maybe, maybe it is not preaching for you. Maybe it is singing. Yeah? And you're like, hey, I've been on this worship team for a long time. Now they've never given me the mic to lead. Don't worry. The Lord is working on you. Amen. Maybe you're behind there in the machines. Yeah? Working on sound. And you also wish one day to hold the mic and preach to people. Don't worry, your time is coming. First, handle those cables. Amen. Yeah, handle the guest experience, handle the cables, and be in the background like Moses. 40 years, God was working on him, making sure that his roots go down. The time he was revealed, hey, he did mighty things. He led the children of Israel out. So, people who receive the word, but because they have no root in themselves, the word. What does it say? Let me not use my own words. Verse 17. They have no root in themselves and so endure only for a time. Afterwards, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Notice the choice of words that Jesus is using here. He says that tribulation and persecution arises for what? For the word's sake. When they are tribulating you and persecuting you, it is not for you. It is for the word in you. So persecution and tribulation come for the sake of the word. The devil is after the word in you. If you have no word, in fact, he has no, he has, he has no reason to, to persecute you. Because you are useless to him. In fact, you are on his side. <laughs> and Romak is the one who said that if you are walking on this journey of Christianity and you somehow never bump into the devil, there's a problem. Maybe you are walking in the same direction. I'm telling you. Yeah, because if you're walking against it, somehow you will bump into him one way or another. At least once in a while, you bump into him. Me, I bumped into the devil today. <laughs> yeah, I came in the morning, I, I had the thing of discouragement. I was like, yeah. Where is this thing coming from? In the morning, morning prayer. I felt like, yeah. and I had to encourage myself. The Bible says that, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. I had to pray louder. Pastor Lama was here. I spent like 45 minutes just praying sheepish prayers. Do you know sheepish prayers? Sheep, 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 I raised my voice and said, Amen. Yeah, and I came out encouraged. Now I'm preaching a good sermon. <laughs> so if you never bump into the devil, maybe you're walking in the same direction. 
I'm, I'll tell you another story. You know, do you like my stories? Or what the people decided are the ones who like them? <laughs> so there was a guy called Smith Wigglesworth. This guy had a revelation of uh, persecution because he had read stories of how people were. I think he read John John Fox's book of matters and talked about you know people who were persecuted and they were, did it for Christ. They did mighty exploits. So he desired. Actually, for him, persecution was like confirmation that is in the will of God. So this guy, they used to persecute him. They used to laugh at him. They used to all kind of mild, uh, medium, and strong persecutions. All of them were on him. So one day, he's riding his horse, and he realizes, ah, it has been about a week. No one has persecuted me. Am I in the will of God? He got off his horse in the middle of the road and he knelt down and said, Father, forgive me if I've done anything wrong. I don't know why no one has persecuted me, but please forgive me. A little boy across the road, he was observing um, a man kneeling in the middle of the road, picked up a stone and threw at him. The stone landed and said, Father, thank you for confirmation. Thank you for <laughs> He got on his horse and continued. <laughs> Yeah, persecution is for the word's sake. It is not for you. Amen. Because the devil is after the word in you. So you hear the word and you are initially excited about it, but a lack of depth of heart means that when challenges related to that word coming to pass arise, you stumble. Amen. So don't allow for you to be stumbled on tribulations and persecutions. Know that they are coming for the sake of Christ. They are targeting the Christ in you. Christ in you is the word. The word in you is Christ. And so you must stand your ground. So let us look at some of these. Uh, I have three written here in my notes. Being ridiculed by friends and family for what you believe. Okay, like Smith Wigglesworth, he was used to being persecuted. Amen. And so, this can happen to anyone, anytime. Your family, I remember when I was baptized in, by immersion. P6 is how many years? When you're in P6, you're how old? You are 11. Yes, yeah. <laughs> So when I was 11 years, I was baptized at KPC, which is now Watoto Church, Central, by immersion. That church has a pool at the stage. Tell your neighbor, I'm, I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, we need to build a pool here. Very big. So that people come and baptize you when in the middle of the church. So anyway, I was baptized there, and my parents were not aware. And so when I got back home, I don't know how news reached my dad in the office. But when he came back home, he was aware that I had been baptized. I don't even... In fact, no, it, it must have been a Sunday. But he was not around. Oh, yeah, he would go to, to the village and come back Sunday evening. Yeah, so that evening when he came back from the village, he, I don't know how news got to him, but he had known that his son had been baptized a second time. Remember, in the Anglican church, they baptize you by sprinkler method. Yeah? And putting a cross. So he heard that his son had been baptized a second time. It was the first and only time that my father caned me. He chapped me chiboko. Very strong chiboko. <laughs> but I'm telling you that every one of those stripes was grounding me further and further in the faith. It was like as if he was saying, Nyued amu Christo, Nyued amu Christo. <laughs> Because I'm preaching the gospel. Amen. Yeah, at least I was persecuted. Yeah, I can now say the words of Paul. From henceforth, let no man bother me, because I bear in my body the marks of our Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell your neighbor, I'm trying to enjoy the sermon. <laughs> Yeah, I bear in my body the marks of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, <clears throat> number two is temptation. 
to compromise your values in your workplace. That can also be a persecution, a tribulation, or a temptation. Number three, a recurrence of symptoms of sicknesses that you thought you had been healed from. It can also come and discourage you. But the devil is just trying to test your faith, remember. Amen. When, it fi- when he finds when you are grounded in the Lord, he will back off. Amen. And your miracle will come back to you. So number three is about limited fruitfulness. And it's in verse 18 to 19. Verse 18 says that now these are the ones sown among thorns. Tell your neighbor thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things entering in, they choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. These people receive the word. This, this, these hearts, remember we're talking about hearts. Amen. So this heart receives the word, but then it also allows, it also receives other things. And he mentions three things. One is the cares of life. Number two, the deceitfulness of riches. Number three, the desire for other things. KJV says the love for other things. So let's examine all these one by one. The first one is the cares of life. Do you know that cares of life can really mean to be genuine? Like you're sleeping in somebody's house, you have to pay his rent. It's a genuine thing, genuine care. You took your son, your daughter to that school. It's not free. You have to pay the fees. It can be a genuine care. Okay? Yeah, but the enemy can use genuine cares of life to steal the word or to choke the word. Not to steal it, but to choke it. The word is there. But after some time, it becomes unfruitful because the cares of life have exalted themselves above the word or at the same level with the word. The word is there. It's bearing fruit, but the cares of life are at the same level. The same kind of meditation you put on the word is the same meditation you put on the cares of life. Yeah. Do you know that the part of your brain that meditates on the word of God and on the goodness of God is the same part of the brain that meditates on the cares of life. It's the same. So when the Bible says that on your word do I meditate day and night, the part of the brain that does that is the part of the brain that also worries. The part of the brain that worries. That's why they are in in competition. Instead of meditating on scripture, you are worrying. Or as you're trying to meditate on the scripture, you're also worrying at the same time. So there you will bear limited fruit. You bear some car fruit, but not much. You've planted an MC and you're like, I cannot go beyond this level. Why? Because you're also thinking about the cares of life. Where do I get the money? Where do I get rent? You've planted... Uh, you are leading a zone or you are leading a location or you maybe it's a business you've 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 opened a business you could be opening branches all over the country but you just can't go beyond that one branch that one office why because you're thinking about other things they're affecting your fruitfulness so you're not fruitful to the maximum why because of the cares of life amen so we are saying you need to put the cares of life to their place. Amen. Yes, they are there, but they need to be put to their place. How? By exalting the word of God above the cares of life. Yes, the guy abused me verbally, but so what? I'll still praise him. I'll still praise my God. Amen. Job, even when he was facing a life-threatening situation, he told his wife over his friends that even though he slay me, yet shall I praise him. I don't understand what's going on in my life. I can't explain it. But if it is from God, even if God kills me, I will still praise him. Amen. That was the attitude of the heart of Job. No wonder he received restoration. Because his heart exalted God's word above his circumstances. Amen. Exalt the word of God above your situation, above your circumstance. 
I think it is Andrew Marcus who greeted someone and the person and he asked someone how are you and the person say mm, not so well under the circumstances I wouldn't say and he asked him what are you doing from uh, get out from under there yeah yeah you, you don't have to stay under there get out from under those circumstances and walk above your circumstances amen yeah don't allow circumstances to steal the word hallelujah soil number we are going now to soil number 4 because of time soil number 4 i hope did you understand soil number 3 yeah but i didn't finish the other two the other two were within soil number 3 it was the, the the cares of life and then the deceitfulness of riches is on the other extreme whereby everything is going well for you everything like the western world they ask the Africans who go there to preach the gospel, why do we need God? I have everything I need. You are the one who needs God, not me. Yeah, for me, I have money to pay for everything. So, the deceitfulness of riches can also hinder the word from bearing fruit. If you are so successful in business, so successful in your marriage, your children are doing well, you find no reason why you should go to church. Many of us come to church because we have problems, my friend, wearing us down. You're like, I have to reach church. Can't okay, you. Watch it. Let me go go there. Because, but once somebody removes all those problems, eh, and then you begin to see financial success everywhere, marital success everywhere, Parenting success everywhere. Health success everywhere. It becomes a struggle to go to church. <laughs> Isn't it true? It's true. So we need to guard against that. Then the third one was the love for other things. It may not be a sin, but it's just another thing. Yeah, I love God, but I also love my series. They are not seen, Musumba. They are innocent. In fact, in my series, we, the ones I watch, even kissing is not there. So why do you refuse me to watch? They are innocent. Ngakalia okantu ko yoka other thing. You must watch your series up to midnight. Other things. They will affect the fruitfulness of the what? Of the word. So let's guard against that. Soil number four, which is the last one. Unhindered fruitfulness. This is now the soil that bore fruit. Verse 20. What does it say? But these are the ones sown on good ground. Those who hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit. They do th three things. They hear the word, they accept it, and they bear fruit. Meaning if you don't accept the word, you cannot bear fruit. If you don't hear the word, you will not bear fruit. So we need to hear and accept it, and then bear fruit. Psalm 30 fold. Psalm 60 and Psalm 100. This is the good ground. Remember that the most important point here is this good ground had less, not more. It had less hardness of less hardness than the wayside. It had less stones than the stony ground. It had less stones than the thorny ground. For you to bear fruit, you don't need more, you need less. Less TV, less distractions, less cares of this world, less, you don't, you should not mind, you should mind less people persecute you, you should mind less what people care, you should mind less what people, what people say, you should have less, less, less. That's how you bear fruit. But if opinions of men have a very big impact on you, then you will not be able to bear fruit. If you have more hardness, you can't receive the word, you're offended. You have more thorns, more stones, you will not be able to bear fruit. Let us have less. And that, that is how it will make our hearts soft. And when your heart is soft, the word enters, it is hidden there, takes root in your heart, and it's just a matter of time, your word begins to bear fruit in your life. Let us stand up on our feet. Hallelujah. Did you enjoy today's sermon? Is it, was it a good message? Amen. Let us just spend like one or two minutes just thanking God for the word in prayer. 
Makatele Costa Rabash Tekele Basikata Sheketele Bakaraba Ziantara Bakura Basibada. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you, Jesus. Kerebostere Bakura Bashikata Yala Masika. Thank you, Father, because the entrance of your word brings light and gives understanding to the simple. From today, we are going to bear more fruit, more fruit, more fruit, much fruit, much fruit, much fruit in the name of Jesus. We shall have less hardness of heart. We shall have less stones. We shall have less cares of life. We shall have less thorns. Less thorns. We shall not pay attention to the cares of life so much as the same attention of the word. We shall not pay attention to the deceitfulness of riches. We shall not pay attention to the that love for other things, but we shall exalt your word above all those things. We shall exalt your word above all those things. We choose to exalt your word above all those things. We choose to exalt your word above all those things. Maka prekeste le bosida. Rika staka prekeste le baziba. Shekete rika sagata. Shakata yamaka tere baziba wa. Come on, pray, pray, pray. Lean in. One more minute. Pray. Marika sta brashi baba ba. Rika sta leba kuta shabada yaga. Rika sta lamaga. The Lord is delivering someone here. Me shikata yeka sakata lamaga. The Lord is setting you free. He's setting you free. He is setting you free. Ira makosaka sheke teleba kuda baziba. Reke teleba sikata yala masiba ba. Reko teleba kuda ba. The Lord is setting you free. Come on, begin to lean in. Lean in in prayer. Sheke. Tell yourself, I will bear fruit in the name of Jesus. I will bear fruit in Jesus' name. I hide the word of God in my heart. I hide the word of God in my heart. Someone here, you're developing a new interest to read the word of God. Salama katalaba. The Lord is giving someone here new grace to listen to Apostle Moses' podcast in the name of Jesus. To listen to Bishop Doug. To listen to anointed preachers. We shall put in the word, the word, the word. In Jesus' name, the Lord is telling someone here, this is your year of fruitfulness and it begins this month of February. It begins this month of February. In the name of Jesus, you're going to see a difference before this month ends. Before this month ends. Before this month ends. You're going to see fruitfulness. You're going to receive a testimony. A testimony in the name of Jesus. In your business. A testimony in your marriage. My goodness, so strong. The word on marriage is so strong. So strong. The word on marriage is saying that before this month ends, you're going to receive a testimony in your marriage in the name of Jesus. The Lord is healing your marriage in Jesus' name. The Lord is giving somebody a new business. The Lord is expanding somebody's business here in the name of Jesus. The Lord is giving somebody new ideas, new ideas, fruitfulness, fruitfulness in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for fruitfulness. Thank you, Lord, for fruitfulness. Thank you for your word, my God. We receive your word, O God. We receive your anointing, O God. We receive your favor. We receive your favor in the name of Jesus. Make it a level sikataba. She and Taraba Karabasi Baba. Rika Sakatayala Mashike de Baga. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you're here and you've never spoken in tongues, come and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Just run to the front right now and receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. In the name of Jesus, the Lord wants to give you a new prayer language. The rest of us, let's continue praying in the Spirit. The rest of the rest of us continue praying in the Spirit. Lake is young grammar, lift up your hands. Marika Sakata Yamaga. You break it, young grammar, Kora Bazibaba. Baptize her, my God, with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Baptize her in the spirit, my Lord. Gira Masika Yala Mashibaba. Break a bed, young grammar, Kora Basianda, Makura Kasianda Maga. Receive the gift of the spirit. Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive it. Merek is young grammar, Kara Bazaga. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Kelly Mosianda, Makura Bazaga. Open your mouth and pray in tongues. Open your mouth. Do not be silent. Open your mouth and give thanks to God. Make it a Receive it in Jesus' name.
That's why I give you a new prayer language right now. And you will never be defeated. You will never be defeated. The Lord is removing that fear. In Jesus' name, you will never fear anyone anymore. In the name of Jesus, you shall be able to walk into any door with the boldness of God. In the name of Jesus, baptize her, my God, with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, shake it a strong anointing upon you. In Jesus' mighty name, Korabasi Antarabaka, Rekeseke Yangrabaga, Lekoste Rebakura Baga, Rekasi Yangrabaga, anointing my God with your power, with your glory, Shabatayama Kurebasi Antaba, anointing Lord with your power and with your glory. In Jesus' name, Ilikos Yangaba, even as you anointed the prophet Samuel from a young age, Mariko Sebe Yanga, even so anointing Lord from a young age, he shall serve you all the days of his life and none of his world shall fall to, you, to the ground. None of your words shall fall to the ground. Begin to speak in tongues right now. Make a Rikas Yangaba open your mouth and speak in tongues right now. In Jesus' name, yes, yes. Karibas Yangaba, don't stop, don't stop, continue. Receive that gift in the name of Jesus. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living waters. Rivers of living waters flow from you in Jesus' name. For the healing of the nations in Jesus' name, Marika Satala Makura Baba. Break it and never go to Yangra Maga. The Spirit of the Lord is upon you, for He has anointed you to preach the gospel unto the poor. Masika Tayala Maga. Receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Karama Siangra Makaraba. You will never doubt again. You will never doubt again. Hila Makos Yangra Makura Baba. Break it, Yangra Makara Baba. Riko Soko Teke Yangra Maga. A strong anointing upon you, Maraga. Nekos Yangra Baba. The anointing of Jeremiah is upon you. For he is anointing you to uproot and to tear down. To uproot and to plant. Oh, Kasiyangaba, to tear down and to build new things. You will uproot all things and you will plant new things. You will tear down the devil's things and you will build God's things. In the name of Jesus, Marika Salamaka, where he sends you, you will go and you will speak his word even as he puts it in your mouth. His word shall burn in your bones like the fire that burnt in the bones of Jeremiah. In the name of Jesus, go remasika tayamaga. Rikas yanga, receive the gift of breaking tongues. In the name of Jesus, receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost right now. In the name of Jesus, go remasika tayamaga. Yes, it's there. Receive it and go with it in Jesus' name. Go remasika tayalama sebaba. Rikas akayamama. Receive it in Jesus' name. Likos tabayamama. Rikas akayamama. The Lord is upon you. Like beauty, like beauty, like beauty. Beauty for ashes. Receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Don't stop, don't stop. Thank you, Lord Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Also, if you're here and you'd like to get born again, come to the front right now. If you'd like to give your life to Jesus, come and receive Jesus right now because the Lord wants you to bear fruit in your life and you cannot bear fruit of Jesus except if you are in Jesus. Right now, come to the front and receive Jesus if you've not yet received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are we all born again? You can you can take a minute and find out from your neighbor if they are born again. If they need help to walk to the front, you can walk them to the front. In the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We don't want to leave anyone behind. We want everyone to receive Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Now let us lift up our hands for the blessing. Lord, I thank you for your people. I thank you, Father, because you've chosen them for such a time as this. And you have chosen them like you chose Queen Esther. For such a time as this have you been chosen. In your family, you've been chosen. In your extended family, you've been chosen. In your business, you've been chosen. In your workplace, you've been chosen. In your ministry, you've been chosen. And may you go with the blessing of God to shine forth the word of God in that darkness. Receive the blessing of God which makes you rich and adds no sorrow with it. Receive it. Receive it and heal the sick. Receive it and cause people to be joyful. Receive it and cause people to be at peace. Receive it and cause people to have a breakthrough because the Lord is with you. May you receive and walk in the victory of Gideon who saved the nation of Israel. Thank you, Father, for we go in the fruitfulness of the word of God and that fruitfulness affects our marriages. That fruitfulness affects our businesses. That fruitfulness affects our health. Somebody here, the Lord is giving you a child, a child, a baby. Marika Stalamaka, Zipa Talamaka, as a sign of his fruitfulness. Receive your child in Jesus' name. I rebuke the barrenness of the womb. Receive your child in Jesus' name. Maybe you're a man and you've not had a child. The Lord is giving you a child in the name of Jesus. Fruitfulness. In your body, in Jesus' name, Maliko Stalamaka. Somebody, God is giving you a new business in the name of Jesus. Makata Prokos Telebaga. Fruitfulness, fruitfulness in every area of life. Your loved ones are getting born again. Fruitfulness in Jesus' name. Someone you've been preaching the gospel and not winning anyone to Christ. From today, you're going to begin to win souls. You will take, you will tell them about Jesus and they'll get born again in Jesus' name. He's giving you fruitfulness in your ministry. You will sing and people will get healed in Jesus' name. You will sing and people will get baptized in the Holy Spirit. You will sing and the presence of God shall come down. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We receive your blessing and walk in it all the days of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen. Amen. Just one announcement. First time guests, we are meeting in this room near the entrance. You can put up your hands again. Recognition. First time guests. Yeah. Please, we are meeting in this room near the entrance to share a drink with you and tell you more about this church. The rest of us share a drink with someone and talk to somebody whom you did not come with. Talk to somebody whom you did not know before. Amen. We love you, believe in you, and pray for you. God bless you. Bye-bye.